This is Vern Venom Grimsley. With the Spiritual Renaissance broadcast, you can either do as much with your human life as you're able to do or as little with your life as you're able. Those are your fundamental two alternatives. You can always get by doing as little as possible. Do you remember being back in grade school as a young person and being assigned to write a 100-word theme about how you spent your summer vacation and meticulously counting every single word as you wrote it until you reached 99 and then wondered whether you could get away with counting the final period in your very last sentence as the 100th word. That is how some human beings live their lives. It can be tragic. My old grandfather back in Kansas told me one time about a farmhand that he had who would be out turning the soil with a horse-pulled plow up and down from the farmhouse to the far end of the field. But if the noontime dinner bell would ring, when the hand was at the far end of the field, instead of plowing the row back to the house, he would leave the plow there at the far end of the field and walk back. When the bell rang, he ceased his labors whenever and wherever. He was one of those men who, if he'd had a third hand, would have needed another front pocket to put it in. But you've seen this in all walks of life. Beginning at 4 o'clock, some office workers look at their watches every 30 seconds to be certain 5 o'clock doesn't slip up on them by surprise. And very few of them are ever surprised. In some offices where leaving time is 5 o'clock, quitting time may be anywhere from 4.50 back to 2.30 or 3. But Jesus of Nazareth, some 2,000 years ago, once said, Blessed are you who hear my words and then do them. He also said, I work and my Father works also. God has a work for you to do in the living of your life. And if you will give God all you've got, and then give your life and the living of your life all you've got, you will live such a life that you're going to wonder if you're really the same person that you were before. And in truth, you will not be, because this is the transformation of spiritual rebirth. That your attitudes and your outlooks can be reformed and transformed, your soul regenerated. All things can become new to you when you find that God has a will for your life and a work for you to do in the living of your life. Give God all you've got, and God will give you even more. You may say, if I give God all I've got, that isn't very much. But how do you really know? How do you know? Have you ever done it sincerely, earnestly? You may say, no, but I really don't think I have much to give. But how do you know? How do you know? How can you possibly say that if you give God all that you've got, you won't be giving very much? If you've never really done it sincerely and wholeheartedly before in your life, how can you so much as suppose you know how much or how little you have to give until you begin giving it? Said Jesus, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, your mind, and your strength. Not with part of your heart, soul, mind, and strength, but totally. You may be quite convinced that you haven't much to offer to God or to life itself. But until you begin to offer it, you can't be sure. And something will amaze you. Because when you give God all you've got, you've got more to give. Don't ask me how it happens. No theologian or philosopher knows. I don't understand for sure why a soda pop bottle fizzes when you shake it. How could I explain how God can make a person more than that person is? But it does happen, and it can happen in your life. The moment you give God all you've got, is the moment you will find you've got more to give than you ever thought you did. Because when you and God go into partnership, tremendous things begin to happen. In your life, your mind, your will, your consciousness, your aspirations, your desires, what you want to do and be and become. You become infused with a new motivation, a new purpose in being alive, living as the son or the daughter of God you were born to be, and living in vibrant vigorous faith. There are skeptics who will always ridicule faith, who will argue that faith is foolishness. Let it be admitted that mankind has frequently vested its faith in foolishness. 
People have put their faith in rabbits, feet, totem poles, shrunken heads, fetishes, amulets, magic, fortune-telling, etc. Yet, however childishly or unscientifically it may have been expressed, the principle of faith, nevertheless, is a vital and a meaningful principle. The great French physician, Linnaeus, once noticed children in Paris sending messages along a wooden pole by scratching on one end and leaning against the other end to listen with their ears. And observing those children at their play gave him the idea for the stethoscope. Dr. Linnaeus rolled a piece of paper into a tube and pressed it to the chest of an overweight patient with heart disease, and thus was the stethoscope invented. The principle of the stethoscope had been discovered by children at their play. The higher applications of that principle emerged in the insight and the understanding of the person who desired to apply that principle for more beneficial purposes. And so it is with faith. Some have applied it to utterly childish concepts and beliefs, believing in the most absurdly irrational superstitions, but when it is applied in the higher realms of reality by those possessed of the wisdom, insight, and understanding to utilize the resources of faith intelligently, it is an astonishingly meaningful expression of the highest potential of humankind. Faith may be used as a power or as a plaything. The choice belongs to you. Your faith may be utilized either to sustain your superstitions or ultimately to serve your God. The choice is wholly yours. By faith it is possible to tap the very energies of this universe, to live in living love with power and with purpose. As the Master said it, according to your faith, so shall it be to you. And he said, have faith in God. God has a purpose and a plan for this planet, for this entire universe, for galaxy beyond galaxy, and incredibly, God has a purpose for your life as well, regardless of how purposeless and meaningless your life may seem at this given moment or any given moment. God has better things for your life if you will seek. Seek, said Jesus, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened. Ask, and you will receive. History records that the greatest human beings who have lived upon this earth are those who are possessed of persistence, determination, and an aspiration to excel. The famous black reformer, writer, and educator Booker T. Washington, who died in the year 1915, as a young boy had worked in the coal mines and salt works of West Virginia to help support his family. Then, after a full day of work, would go on to attend school for several hours more each night. When Booker T. Washington was a lad of only 16, he walked some 500 miles from his home to the Hampton Institute for further schooling where he again worked his way through school and graduated. Soon he had begun a school in Tuskegee, Alabama, starting with only 30 pupils in an old religious sanctuary. But in time, his small school for blacks had grown into the now famous Tuskegee Institute with thousands of students in attendance. Booker T. Washington, who had been reared as a slave cast off his shackles and rose to greatness as a leader through the sheer and simple power of persistent aspiration. A burning idealism, not only for himself, but for his race and for humankind in totality. These are the ingredients of genuine greatness, not only on the political, educational, and cultural levels, but spiritually. For your life as well, it is that divine discontent which smolders within the souls of men and women, which stirs them to their noblest achievements. It is that incandescent aspiration of spirit which illumines the path of destiny stretching before the person who undertakes great projects in his or her time. For the noblest and the best in human behavior is not born of flesh alone, but of the living spirit of the living God within the human mind, which inspires and invigorates the lives of men and women who have the courage to be true to the best they know. There is within you and in shackled splendor, the very spiritual power and presence of God. And you can release and unleash that dormant power within you by living faith, faith in God, and aspiring for the highest and the best. Two thousand years ago, this charismatic carpenter called humankind to aspire for perfection. Be you therefore perfect, 
he challenged you. Even as your Father in heaven is perfect, hunger and thirst after goodness, he taught. Quest for truth, he declared, for the truth will make you free and will in your heart and mind above all things to do and live the will of God, to be the person about God's purposes upon this planet. Be God's person, God's son or daughter, as you were born and created to be, and as in your soul you really long to be. To do this is to live not only now but forever, eternally, but beginning here and now, yet extending ultimately for endless eons throughout this universe of universes. God calls you to greatness, but only you can answer that call. Be clear in your mind regarding one truth. The spiritual life is not one of tepid torpitude, indolent indifference, and lassitudinous lazyhood. It is a life of stirring and red-blooded labor, of undertaking demanding tasks and energetic exertions. One business firm in California has this sign near the coffee machine on the wall of the office. The sign reads, due to increased competition and a keen desire to stay in business, we are asking that each employee, somewhere between starting and quitting time, set aside some time to be known as the work break. The spiritual life as well is a demanding undertaking, calling forth all of your mental, physical, and other God-given resources. But yet it is more than that. It is the supreme delight in all of human life, here and forever, the giving of your life to the very loving God who gave you your life originally and living henceforth as the son or the daughter of God, you really are. For free literature on the spiritual life, write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Growing Spiritually, Seven Principles of Prayer, the Fatherhood of God, the Brotherhood of Man, any and all of this literature, yours with no cost, charge, or obligation when you write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And for those of you listening in other countries around the world, over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell the mailing address. Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A 93644, United States of America. Again, no cost, no charge, no obligation. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, May God's will be done by you. Good day.